September 7th, 2010 Planning Commission meeting. Um, wanna, I think we took a break in August uh, and hope everyone had a nice summer vacation and now back to, back to, the, back to the grind. Um, why don't we start with uh, the minutes of the July 6th, 2010 meeting and approval. Um, do we have, has everyone had a chance to review them? Do we have any comments, changes to those minutes? Mark, I have one change. Go ahead. Uh, on the discussion regarding the PLU zoning change, when the vote took place, I actually voted against it. I was the one. I didn't abstain. Okay. Thanks. Sue, can you make that? My only other question was, um, when we talked about the PLU, uh, Rick Barker's comments, he talked about uh, the township, maybe the township needs a new open space district. You mean the district definition? Is that what that means? I would assume that's what it means. Uh, it's You're on. saying about from the fifth, fifth bullet point from the bottom, PLU does not protect open space? Is that what? No, I'm talking on page three, four. Page four? Mm -hmm. one, one. Which one? Oh, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. It says three at the top. Yep. Oh, yep. that's my print, it says three at the top. It's on Rick Barker's comments. We oh, perhaps the township needs a new open space district? Yeah, but I mean, he means definition of something or whatever. Or am I just being. I, unfortunately, I wasn't at that meeting. Does anyone oh, else have a comment on no, that? Yeah, he's talking about we need a, he's saying that perhaps we needed a new open space district designation, the way we have PLU zoning and commercial and residential. He was re making the recommendation that we perhaps need a new so, open space district, okay. you know, designation. Okay. So basically that comment should read, perhaps the township needs a new zoning district, open space district, something of that something nature. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. Any other comments? Changes? Motion to uh, approve as amended. I'll make a motion to approve as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, next on the agenda is subdivision 2010S-03, uh, final state of George R. Atterbury. Uh, I'm just announcing that basically that has been tabled until November at the applicant's request. Um, I guess we need a motion to approve that request. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next one now, Dan. <laughs> Subdivision 2010-S-05, final. Alan Denton and Maria Sontrop and Hal and Sharon Yo to perform a lot line change to transfer portions of each lot to the other. No net change in area of each lot, respectively with no proposed development at the properties of 418 Orchard Way and 502 Meadowbrook Circle. Is the applicant present? Okay, very good. Okay. Let me uh, just orient everyone. We have Orchard Way running along the, the bottom of the page where it intersects with Meadowbrook Circle. We have uh, Meadowbrook Road is right off here. So the two lots are shown as in the bold blue line. It's a little difficult to see, but the current property line zigzags and actually bisects the driveway to 418 Orchard Way. And the proposed line is shown in the blue dashed where it's just shifted off of the driveway and back here it actually straightens itself out and basically reduces from two meets and bounds to one. Uh, there is a current fence back here that kind of follows, not quite follows the property line. Um, so there is a zero net change in the lots. So they have designed it in such a way that neither property gains or loses from this change. Uh, as you pointed out, the applicant is here, so I'm assuming that the, the intent is just to get the line off their driveway, and I'm sure they can address that if, uh, if it is different. But there were six comments from the Subdivision Advisory Committee. Uh, the first four pertain to the waivers that the applicant requested, uh, and basically that was to uh, not identify the steep slopes, not identify the man-made steep slope, or the man-made features within 500 feet of the property. Uh, also talks about showing the two-foot contour lines as well as the datum 
that the contour lines would be associated with. Hmm. The uh, items five and six are the standard language that the solicitor has requested be on all these uh, approvals. So that was it for the comments. In regard to the comments one through four. Sorry, with regard to the comments one through four, um, uh, obviously this is just a, a lot line change, no development proposed, so I'm assuming that the advisory committee has no problem with those? That, with that is correct. Okay. Okay. Does anyone else have a questions for Dan? Or we can hear from the applicant if you wish. Dan, I just had a quick question. 418 is not marked as the owner. The owner's not marked on my <clears throat> plan. I assume that that is the Santrops? Uh, yes, they're, uh, that's correct. It's at the top. At the top where? Up here. Oh, okay. So it's the owner applicant in this area, the top okay. right-hand corner of the plane. What about your finger? Oh, right, so, but not, the others are, have it all on the parcel itself, but that's the sun traps. Okay, nope, just trying to clarify. Thank you. Quick question, why do they want to do this? Any particular well, reason? Well, I, I am assuming it's the driveway, okay. but I, that's my assumption. That's a good question for the applicant. Thank you. Any other questions for Dan from the board? Well, why don't we hear from the applicant? Good evening, Dave Fiorello from Omni and Associates, engineer for the applicant. Um, and my understanding is just the same as Dan expressed that the intent is to remove the driveway encroachment off of the other lot. And uh, as you can see on the plan, there is a bit of a fence that follows along uh, the new alignment of the property line. Uh, the existing fence would sort of veer off. Uh, that would be uh, fixed and uh, to comply in line with the new uh, the new property line, but major intent is to remove any encroachments off of the adjoining properties. Um, Dave, one question for you: the I mean, I know the the Yos also own the property that's designated to the left, yes. um, but they treat it all as one property. But uh, I'm assuming that the, they are deeded separately. They are they deeded are separate. separately, and so this is a separate. Um, uh, this could be possibly a separate development lot down the road. Um, yeah, I mean, we show the building setback lines. It is, it is a developable lot. Yes, it is a separately deeded lot. Does the, does the change in the lot lines um, restrict any future development? Uh, and Dan, this might be a combination question for you too, well, with regard to driveway access up to that property. Uh, the thing is, we're only <clears throat> the, uh, present drive has roughly, or the present frontage of the, shall we say, the, the Yo lot at the 502 Meadowbrook has 115 feet of frontage on uh, Meadowbrook Circle. That's being reduced to 101 feet, so there's still plenty of frontage there. There is a way of getting a driveway up there. Um, you can see that we have the building envelope marked on the plan, measured from the new property line, so you can see there's a large building envelope on the property. And again, the, the, the shift down at the along Meadowbrook Circle is, is roughly four feet or so. So it's just enough to get the, the property onto, or the driveway onto its own property so it's not encroaching onto the other one. Okay. Yeah, and I would agree that the lot is buildable now and would be buildable in the future. Okay. okay. Uh, any questions for the applicant? There appears to be a path to the pool from the driveway that crosses the property line and crosses it again. Is okay. that correct? Yes, it, it's shown on the plan. It's from an, an older survey, but yes, there is a, a walkway that goes up there. And there was no attempt made to address that issue? Um, I can talk to the owner. Is that path still there? It's a series of stepping stones. It's a series of stepping stones that goes up a, a small embankment. Is your intent to leave it there? Is it not used? Um, the, the I'm sorry. Alan. Maybe you can introduce yeah, introduce yourself and state your. Uh, yes, my name is Alan Denton. I'm one of the owners of Four and Eight Orchard Way. Um, it's come as something of surprise to find that I didn't own all my own driveway. <laughs> 
Um, so we've reached an agreement with the Yos to to sort this out. It's a zero sum game from a, from a property area point of view. Uh, regarding the little the pathway there, it's a series of stepping stones which runs sort of up the bank and to a gate in the in the pool fence. But it runs onto the Yos property. It does it at present. Um, if we have to move it, we will. But it's a matter of moving a stepping stone two feet on a piece of lawn. Well, I don't know that it's coming on us to address that issue now. I was just curious about it. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other questions? Dan, that uh, back lot, though, is a flag lot, right? What we call flag lot? That's correct. <clears throat> I ha we haven't seen one of those in a long time. What's the... Uh, if it's uh, pre-existing, we... Uh, we just take note of it? Um, well, if, if it was a new one, it would have to be two acres. So the fact that it is pre-existing, it, it, it's grandfathered. It's there. Yes. Okay. Uh, in regards to the walkway, I, I would say that if the lot line was being changed where the walkway is, it's something that we should address and have it removed. The fact that that lot line is not changing, I don't, I don't think that it's an, an issue. But certainly, if the if the board thinks it makes sense to move that, I mean, it's actually on. the line is being moved further away from the, the walkway than it is now. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. The the new lot line will be farther away from the walkway than the current one is. Yeah. I don't, I don't, see, I don't see any change in that area. Um, I believe you're talking in this area here. No, no. I'm talking about. Oh, talking sorry, about the loop. Here. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. The, the loop. Yep. And, and again, I don't know that it's um, our task in connection with this application to address that, but it just stood out and I was curious about it. I don't have an answer for you. Hmm? I said I don't have an answer for you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Public comment? Anyone from the public? Neighbors? Concerned citizens? Townspeople? Okay, with that, uh, any further discussion amongst the commission? Uh, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve SD 2010-S05 as presented. Second. We probably have to also include um, with the waivers as noted in the uh, uh, sure in the review board, okay. which presented as Dan's comments, including the waivers. Yep. Seconded. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is subdivision number 2010-S-06, final, uh, E. Kurt and Barbara Tukolst, excuse me on that one, and John and Ann Gartland to perform a lot lane change between two properties with change being less than one foot in width at 78 and 86 uh, Oakford Road. Did we have a special on uh, lot lane changes this month? Is that? <laughs> I didn't see it in the newspaper. <clears throat> Go ahead, Dan. Well, if you thought the other one was simple, this is, this is infinitely more simple. Uh, we have Oakford Road running across the southern border of the property, and we have Crestview Road running off to the left. Uh, Moshe Lane is, the cul-de-sac of Moshe Lane is behind these properties. Uh, we, we have two adjoining properties. The current property line is shown in blue. And down the center, you can see that I have a dotted line that shows the proposed lot line. And the engineer actually blew it up so you could see. Um, it's, it is a one-foot change in the rear of the property. So the property on the right is gaining 60 square feet from the property on the left. And the issue is, if you look at the blow-up area, uh, the, the building addition, there's a porch on the side of this house, it encroaches over the property line by three-tenths of a foot. So by shifting the property line one foot in the rear, it, it shifts 
the line a half a foot at this location. So the property line will now be two tenths of a foot off of the building. Okay. So very, very similar comments to the first application. Uh, in this case, the applicant did not ask for the waivers. So my comments are a little bit different saying that the, those waivers are required in order for this application to be approved. And again, the last two items are the, uh, the typical language for uh, complying with our codes. Okay. <clears throat> so Dan, how did the porch get built on the other property? Well, the, I, I pulled the, the, the building permit from the mid-1990s, and it doesn't show clearly where the property line is. It shows a setback of 20-some feet, and obviously that was not correct. So I, I, I did pull it because I was curious at how this happened. So this was built after we had existing setbacks of 20 feet from a property line? Oh, no, line. no, no. no it, it, it was built not, prior to that? Yes. It was built after the setback requirement. Oh, right. Yeah, That's it, what, yeah, okay. It should not have happened. Right. Got it. Okay. Is the applicant here? Um, do, and first off, any other questions for Dan? Okay. If you could just introduce yourself. I'm sorry. Could you just introduce yourself, please? I, I still didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Introdu please introduce yourself. Oh, hi. My name is Kurt Dekolsty. I'm the owner of the okay. 78 Oakford Road property, okay. the one with the <coughs> offending porch. Um, the, the property between the two, the land between the two houses is not really, it's not a lot. It's uh, very irregular land. It's got uh, ivy, a, a huge boulder. There's a, you can see the nick out of the, wherever it is, the nick out of the side of the porch here. That's a, that's a huge boulder there and trees. And it, it, it just, for 30 years, we've just assumed the lot line was halfway between the houses. We were shocked to find out that it wasn't. So um, the neighbors were kind enough to agree to a, this change. And so we've uh, made the request. Do you have any questions? I'm just curious what made you look and find out that it was, that there was a lot line issue? Uh, well, that was actually because, I, I should let the Gartlands answer that. They, for other reasons, having nothing to do with this lot line, they got a survey of the house and discovered the, the, the discrepancy. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, any public comment? Okay. Motion. I'll do I, it again. Like to make a oh, motion. I'm, you know what? Really, I'm sorry. Does it make sense? Um, would you want to seek the waivers um, necessary so you don't have to go back and have your plans altered um, to show all this additional um, information on your plan? Oh uh, yes, I believe that would be sounds sensible. Would be prudent of you. Yes. So why don't we make a motion um, with the same uh, comments? Um, as the previous plan so that uh, this can be approved as a final t this evening. Okay. Ed. So you want it again? So I'll make a motion to approve uh, SD2010S06 as a final to include the four waivers as in Dan's comments and, and the, um, the other four comments as Dan has in front of us. Yeah, I'll just, it's section 255-22B1D7. 255-22B1K, 255-22B1, and 255-22B1Q are the waivers that we'll uh, seek to uh, grant. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have SD-2010, subdivision-2010-SD04, uh, sketch plan. James D'Antonio to combine existing six parcels into one lot and construct 14 townhomes in three buildings at 415 Maplewood Avenue. Um, as has always been the procedure at the Planning Commission, there is no public comment in sketch plan review. Dan, and the applicant is here. Yes. 
Okay, as, as you noted, this is the address is 415 Maplewood. Here is Maplewood running in the north-south direction. Conestoga Road is down to the north. Uh, Maplewood changes to Highland right in this area. Maplewood actually veers off to the left. Um, currently, the property is being used for the D'Antonio paving. Uh, there are currently two entrances to the property, one on Maplewood and one on Highland. I, I apologize for my, my coloring. Um, it, it, got, it got crowded. But I, I tried to show the various lots that, uh, that make up the entire parcel. They are all being combined into one lot. There's currently a uh, three or four, bu uh, four buildings on the property and some sheds. And I tried to highlight those in, in yellow. And they are closer to the Maplewood. Uh, if you're familiar with the site, there are two homes out front on Maplewood, and then there's some buildings that are behind them that are used for the construction or for the uh, paving operation. Uh, the orange that is winds through the property is what is basically paved now. The pink is what is proposed, so it's a winding driveway that would serve the 14 townhomes that are shown in three groups of buildings. Uh, I did not show the individual individual driveways to the buildings only because it was getting very crowded. So that's it in a nutshell of the, of the layout. There were 11 comments from the Subdivision Advisory Committee. And uh, so I'll just go through them. They're, they're pretty minor. Um, however, item number one refers to uh, a, a number of typographical errors in the general notes that need to be cleaned up. We also require the written and the graphic scale to be shown as part of a sketch plan. Uh, the committee is asking that the proposed sidewalk be extended down the north side of the access to Highland Avenue. So we're looking for a sidewalk now as shown to end here. We're looking to have a sidewalk come all the way out to Highland. Uh, uh, item number four talks about a, uh, a possible drafting error. Again, the dark line ends in this area. We're looking for it to continue all the way down to Highland. Uh, I'm interpreting that to be the driveway width, so we want to see that uh, that that goes all the way to Highland. Uh, it's approximately 160 feet long. Uh, the location item five, the location map is not drawn to the correct scale. Uh, item six requires even at the sketch plan that all man-made features within 500 feet of the property be shown. Item seven, require that all the dimensions of the parking spaces also be noted on the plans. Uh, we're asking that uh, under item eight to show the address of the property. Item number nine is referring to, to the parking area in this, in this off of Maplewood. Currently there are five spaces shown, but three of them encroach into the front yard setback. So those three have to be removed. Uh, it does, even with the removal of those three, the parking requirements are still met. Uh, item number 10, uh, we're looking for some more information about the access, whether or not this is going to be considered a driveway or if it will be considered a road. So we, uh, we just need additional information, certainly when they come back, or, or tonight even, when they uh, come back with a preliminary or a final plan. Uh, the main reason is it's currently shown as 22 feet. So if it is going to be something more than a driveway, it needs to comply with the township's codes. And uh, our specifications call for it to be 28 feet, whether it's a private road or a public road. And uh, item number 11 is referring to the impervious cover. So currently the property exceeds the impervious cover for the zoning district. And uh, the applicant as, as we see it tonight, is reducing that, but uh, it still would exceed what is permitted under the zoning district. So uh, they'd need zoning relief on that? Well, in the past, we have not required zoning relief because they are making an improvement. So I was not coming with that recommendation to you. So they're currently at 41.18%, and they're reducing it to 39.86. And under this section of the R5 zoning, it's, uh, it's required to be 36%. So 
the, the R5 zoning district actually is broken up into a, a couple of different sections. If it was a, a, a single family home in the R5, the impervious cover is 40%. But because it's multifamily, it's reduced to 36%. Neighborhood for our comments. Okay. Question, when they take out the three parking spaces, does that change that? Or is that included in that? Well, that's gonna reduce the impervious. Right. Is that gonna reduce it below 39.86? I don't believe it'll reduce it that much. Lewis question. Dan, uh, if they have to widen the road, that will make it probably greater than the current impervious? I would think it would, yes. Yeah. Um, has there been any discussion about why there's so many parking spaces? as opposed to the requirements? I did not have that discussion with them. Okay. Dan, at this point, what, what's the neighbor notification at this stage with a sketch plan? There is no notification. <clears throat> so the neighbors who surround this are not necessarily aware of the proposed development? That is correct. And what's the building height requirement in I, uh, limited in 40 R5? Feet. 40 feet. In R5? Yes. Dan, is the township required two access points for this number of houses, or is that just the design of the applicant? That's the design. They, they have two access points now. But that's not a requirement that we no. put on them. Okay. That's correct. Would, would you deem the driveway, does our code allow for a driveway that services 16 townhomes? Is that what it is? 14, 14. excuse me, 14 townhomes? Or does that automatically put it into a private roadway, or? It, it would not automatically put it into that situation. The one nice thing is it can be made a through street, so that is a, a plus if it was kept to be a driveway. Uh, I'm concerned about fire access, and you know, if, if this is the direction they're gonna continue to go, you know, I'm at the preliminary phase or at the final phase, I'm gonna be asking the applicant to submit some more information about the driveway to, to document that large vehicles can access the site. Certainly coming off of Highland or Maplewood and entering it, you know, it seems like the bend in the middle is fine, but certainly turning onto or uh, out of is a concern. Tim, what do we have for sidewalks on Maplewood now? There are none on Maplewood. None. They are showing a sidewalk okay. from the bridge up, basically the entire, their entire frontage on Maplewood. Got it. There is sidewalk on Highland, uh, that's basically on both sides. Uh, on this side, it ends at Maplewood, and on the north side of Highland, it ends a couple of properties down. So ideally, it would be nice to connect, really from the art center, which is all right here around. on the other side of the bridge, all the way to the existing. Dan, two questions. Um, is, is a consolidation of lots, that's a buy right thing? People can do that? Yeah, that, that's typically done through the land development process. Okay. It's all one step. And uh, what's the deal with Central Ave, these, these townhomes behind? It says it's a private road, not dedicated, but it, the townhomes seem to be budding right up and on some cases right on the line. Well, well Central Ave is really what it's referred to. Um, even though there's not a road, it's really a driveway now. And, it, and as I said earlier, it, part of the, the paving operation. So the applicant can probably give you a better history on that, but it's always, it's even in our books as Central Ave, even though there's really not a road there. So it's paved or not paved? I've never it, seen it's it. It's paved, it's paved. Does that all have to come up? Some of these townhomes look like they'd be built right oh, yeah. onto the road. Yeah, no, that would all be removed. So that would cease to exist as a road, private or otherwise? Yes. And or, or it would be shifted. So from the shifted. back the the orange is now, and it could be shifted forward. Basically, potentially call that Central Ave, if you will. It, it could be, yes. And all these impervious calculations are based on what happening with Central Ave, that it gets ripped up? Yes. Okay. So, well, there, there's two numbers, one showing existing and one showing proposed. So the proposed number would be all this orange black, all this orange being removed. As well as the buildings, obviously, that are existing. The, the existing uh, you know, okay. All of the, all of the orange removed. Yeah, the orange that comes up and snakes through here. 
Uh, you know, it looks to be, a st on, my map, on my thing, it looks to be a straighter road, but now that I see the orange, I, I see what you're saying. Okay. All right. Thank you. All six lots are currently R5, Dan? Yes, the, the entire area is. Dan, yeah, do you anticipate any special um, environmental concerns when this site is developed, given its existing use? Um, I've been up there a couple of times. I haven't seen anything that, that is a, of a concern, but certainly being a paving operation, sure that there's been some minor spills, but I haven't seen anything. I don't see oil drums spewed around the, the property, so it, it seems to be well taken care of. Dan, did Shade Tree look at this? Uh, no, it has not gone to Shade Tree yet. Because if I'm counting, there's quite a few trees that will be removed. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah, significant. The, when they come back, they'll have to go to Shade Tree and go through that process. Okay. Will they have to, uh, she brought up the idea of the environmental stuff, will they have to do any kind of uh, site testing or anything like that? Not, not from what we are doing. Come on, at the moment. Not, not, not through the land development process. We don't have that requirement. Are they any, anywhere else in the codes, like the zoning code or anything else like that? The township's not going to require them to do any of that. Um, no. No, there's nothing in our codes that require a site assessment looking for pollutants. What about in the county's codes? Typically, when the property transfers, that's when you and that's when someone, the purchaser, will want to do a, a phase one or a phase two site analysis. But that's not required. That's, that's that's more a protection of the new buyer thing. It's the protection of the new buyer. Typically, the mortgage company wants something like that. Right. right. Are there no state laws require that? Not that you're aware of. Not that I'm aware of. No. I'm very I mean, surprised. I'll take a look before he comes back. Well, that's but I'm all right. not aware of it. That's more my own interest. I think that's kind of bizarre, but that's right. I would, uh, check, other, I would check on that. I don't know, but if you, you'd think that PADEP, because you've got separate environmental standards for an Act Two and for residential standards and commercial standards, um, then again, if it, to trigger Act Two or any type of that, you need a, a spill of some nature, some complaint. So, but it'd be interesting to look into that. Question, how have they been, um, this is all zoned R5? Correct. How long have they been ro running a paving thing from there? 80 years. 80? Yeah. Oh, man. Why don't we, why don't we <laughs> hear from the applicant? Do you want to? Uh, that's okay. No. Uh, the only other question I have is um, if you have the impervious stuff, are we, uh, would we consider any kind of uh, water runoff mitigation kind of thing? Like, uh, well, they're, they're, they're required to do stormwater management. That's what I meant. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's going to be required at the next step, but not at this point in time. One other question, Dan. Uh, so the impervious coverage is 36 percent? That, that's the maximum permitted. And they're proposing 39 percent change. Correct. So do they need a variance? Well, in, we the, in the past, we have not, if they've made the situation better, we have not required them to go to zoning. For so that. right now they're at 41.8, 41.18 and they're bringing it down to 39.8. So we want them to keep it under 40 percent, is that? Well, ideally, I'd want to keep them under 36, but right. yes, as under long as 40. they're making it better. <coughs> Dan, by the time they widen the road, if it becomes a road versus a driveway, and add maybe more sidewalk, I think somebody was saying earlier, it, it may go over the 41 even the 41.18, then what happens? They need relief or? Then they would need to relief from the Zoning Hearing Board. Automatically? Yes. Now, there, there's a number of driveways. I'm not sure. I know you can't see it here but right. on the plans. Uh, you know, Skip brought up about you know, the additional parking spaces that are proposed. You know, there may be something that can be done to minimize some of those and bring the numbers down. But that's really something that their engineer is going to have to Right, and, and then really up until the 41.18, it's more at the discretion of either township or us or whomever of whether or not we want to ask them to get it back to 36 or, you know, they're making an improvement, so we'll let it go. Yeah, it's <clears> going to be difficult to get it to 36. Well, it's 14 units. Right, okay. All right, thanks. 
Why don't we hear from the applicant? Dan, one more question. Do we actually have, and it's hard to tell since we're talking about lot lines, do we actually have two buildings here that are over the lot line? There's Looks there like two homes out front, and then there's a building back here that, that, that abuts against the bike trail. Yeah, we go. And two sheds. Looks like the sheds aren't on the property. Yeah, the sheds are shown clearly off the property. Off the property. And then this, this masonry and frame garage is right up against right the up property against line. It. And then there's one on the other side. Gotcha. Thank you. That's the bike path behind it. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, the Wayne Art Center is right here. So it's right opposite the Wayne Art Center. Dan, can you describe the topography between the bike trail and the proposed units? The, uh, the bike trail is probably uh, an eight or nine foot cut. It's lower than this property by about eight or nine feet. And it's probably a little bit more. Um, there's a bridge that goes over Maplewood, and I think that bridge might be a 12, mm -hmm. clearance of 12 feet, 12 feet one. How about at the other end? You know, it, it, it's a little bit less, but it's still it's still it's still significant. Cut. The bike path is below. below. Okay. Yeah, the art center is pretty level in that area, but this property sits higher. And then the Mayo's uh, Keystone Gardens sits much higher. That's next to the bike trail or next to the art center. Of it if you guys want them. That'd be great. My name is Andy Everwine. I'm with Into the mic Sorry. when you get a chance. Thank you. Andy Everwine. I'm with EB Walsh and Associates. We're the civil engineers representing the D'Antonios. With me tonight is Al D'Antonio and Jim D'Antonio, brothers who are owners of the property and trustees of the estate. Dan said, we pretty much summed everything up. I think there's some answers to some questions uh, that are outstanding. If you want me to address them uh, or have you re-answer them or, or re-ask them, how you want to... Why don't you give a, pull the microphone over? Just give a brief, um, uh, more of a, a more of a details. What are the size of the um, townhomes going to be? What is the overall scope? Okay. Kind of a general presentation. The intention was to create a driveway, not a th public street or a private street through here, to keep it private for the residences of these this community. And there's two lots uh, over toward Highland Avenue in this location and this location that have driveways off of that existing driveway that we would maintain and allow them to have. The homeowners association would be responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of that driveway and the ownership of that driveway, not the township or any other entity. That was the intention uh, with this layout. Now, the townhouses themselves are proposed to be 22 foot wide by 40 foot deep, two stories with garage. In the front, each one will be accessed by a driveway. The central units will have one car garages. The end units will have two car garages. The parking that's shown uh, along the street is just overflow parking that we provided in case you have guests. So there's somewhere for somebody who doesn't live there to park when they come to visit. The, the three spaces along the frontage that are over the setback, we certainly will remove because we're not trying to, to create uh, a situation where we, we need a variance. Um, as Dan said, we are reducing the impervious coverages on this property. And, and if I can, just quickly, I want to flip this over because I have a colored version. Ooh, I don't know if that's going to help. Mine show you a little better what's going on there. There's two houses in the front. There's an existing paving is the red 
throughout the entire site. There is actually some paving that goes on to the uh, right of way for the for the Western Rail Company property, which is over there that needs to get taken care of and removed and abandoned. The shed is over on a, uh, two sheds actually cross the property line, and they'll have to be removed. But this shows you a little bit uh, more graphically as a separate, so you don't you can see what exists out there today. So the houses, all these buildings, the paving, and all will be removed from this site for our development. The only thing we're trying to do, and I'm just going to get me to another point, is I'm maintaining the accesses because they've been there for so long. I think people are used to where they are, and from a safety standpoint, they're probably where they need to be. Um, can, the can reason, you flip it, sorry, can you flip it back just really quickly? I'm sorry, yeah. Just for a, a clarification point. The driveway running down the spur on, yes, that is existing and that feeds the two neighboring properties. Could you just discuss that, how that works? It, it's an existing driveway that feeds those properties. There's garages in the back of those units. Mr. D'Antonio maintains that driveway as part of his paving business. His triaxles come in and out of that driveway every day when he's taking them to the site. So he's, they have um, been back here in business for 80 years or more and um, you know they're looking to I think retire. <laughs> so they, they want to, you know, make use of their property other than than a the paving business. And I think, from the standpoint of the neighborhood, and I'm not going to speak for the neighbors because I'm not one of them, but to get the trucks out of there in the early morning and in, you know back there making the noise and and the driving, I think would be a pleasant change for the. Back this to Mark's question: Coming down that spur, those two back driveways are they the only driveway to those? Adjacent properties, they don't enter off of. No, they uh, don't Highland. have. A, they have no no driveway off of Highland. Off Highland, okay. So we would maintain those driveways. Okay. So yes, they have frontage on Highland, but the driveway is in the back. In the back. And you'll also notice that there are two. For lack of a better word, two landlocked lots, back there. There's one that's yes. that's curved, and there's one that's rectangular, not that far back. This one. Yeah, come come down a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yes. Its ownership is um, it's owned by the person who owns the piece in the corner. We would also give them an easement to get into their property off of this piece. They have it. I mean, it, the rights are clearly there. It's been there for a long, long time. So we would, we're not proposing to take that away from them. They're not going to be asked to contribute to the association or the maintenance. They're just going to be have the ability to use that. So is the goal to get 14 rental units, 14 Oh, condos? no, for sale, for sale, townhouses. They're not to be rentals. At least okay. uh, that's not the intention that I – the D'Antonios are actually going to build the project. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason that I didn't extend the curbs down to Highland is that there is an existing driveway there. That's the secondary access and entrance into this project as we see it. There are two, actually three, very large trees existing along that, that access that I'm trying to keep. I will extend the road if I'm told to extend it down there. That's fine. Um, I would prefer to upgrade that with the paving specs that we put in the back but leave the widths where they are, sidewalk it along the property line over here being the, the western property line so that I can save those trees. They're quite majestic. They'd be really nice to keep. I think they'd add to the community. But again, I, I'm not that's why it is the way it is. It wasn't a drafting error. It was an intentional left the way it is because I'm trying to, to, to maintain that road. Of course, we'll upgrade it. We'll upgrade the curbing, but we, we want to keep it at that width. If that poses a problem, that, that's fine. We'll make it wider. Um, as I said, we were proposing to make this 22 feet because I really don't want the impression of this being a through street. This is going to be a private community. So that it is a street called Central Avenue now that nobody uses because it's D'Antonio paving back there. They maintain the entire property. They have equipment in the back uh, in, in some of the areas, and some of it's just vacant. I have a question for you on the Highland driveway again. If you put a sort of a, a little bit of a serpentine curve in that, could you save both trees and widen it a little bit? Possibly. I could, yeah. It was? Yeah. When? <laughs> The big ones. Yeah. Which side? On the right side. On the, the single one on the 
Well, then we'll move, that, move the road over to 22 feet on that side and plant new trees because that tree is no longer there. I didn't know that. Um, we can maintain the other side, though, and we can maintain the, uh, the trees on the other side. And I can still actually put a sidewalk in there and, and maintain that. There's enough of a width there to put a four-foot wide sidewalk in. Did you look at access for the um, future residents to get down to the trail? We, uh, when I met with Dan hmm. and the uh, zoning coordinator before we, we submitted the drawing, they had mentioned it. We're not opposed to providing some kind of access to the trail. That's fine. Just someone uh, with knowledge of better the area, show me where you want it. That's, it's, I think it's a good idea. It's nice, it's a nice selling point for the community. If you remove those three or four parking, how many parking spaces, three? Three. Where are you gonna put them? I don't need them. You don't need them? That will leave you only two though, right? Four. There's two between units five and six. Okay. I may actually look at putting in one, uh, a parallel spot in here and here, the two locations there, to, to try to get some back. I think there needs to be some overflow parking in a community like this because you do get visitors and, and I don't think it's really wise to, to promote parking on a 22 foot wide driveway. But these buildings are designed, are these driveways designed so that if by miracle you can put your cars in the garage, you can park as many cars again in the, in the driveway? That's correct, okay. that is correct. You, you said two stories. Yes. Yeah. Um, where are the garages? First level. You're going to drive into the garage. There'll be a garage in the front of the house and a door either on the left or the right. And then, then your kitchen, your living areas, and the like would be on that area. Bedrooms upstairs. And there'll be, a, um, I'm assuming, basements. Full basements. So garage plus one story, not, yes. not two stories on top of a garage. No, no, no. Garage plus one story. I was thinking Mary For a Kent. total of two stories. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, I'm trying to see the others. As far as all the other things, they're, they're just, they're, I'll take care of a lot of these. It's, it's the typographical errors are me not checking my draft people before I submitted it, and I apologize for that. It's my fault. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, could you live, live with uh, 12 units as opposed to 14? Uh, you're asking the wrong person that question. No, I, I'm just, I, I, I'm in favor of this development. I just think it's too dense. I think if, if, if you could provide some additional uh, setbacks to the, to the trail and particularly to the driveway because it just, it feels like it's, it, you're cramming a lot back there. I guess I'm not sure where you want. I, my setback to the, from, the, from the property line to the trail is 30 feet, and I think the trail is at least another 30 feet from there. Well, it, it, I guess it depends how you orient these, these homes. But well, by setback, I really can't change their, I can't Okay, so as an them. example, if you took away the five parking spaces on the, uh, the front end of the driveway right here by Maplewood Avenue, mm -hmm. and you did away with one of these units, 14 or one, that would create some additional parking on the side for your visitors. It would just provide a little bit more, um, you know, just less asphalt, less uh, less rooftop. That, that's all I'm suggesting. I'm not saying it can't be done. I, I, I'm not saying it can't. What you're suggesting, uh, I'm by turning those units, I lose that access. I'm not suggesting you you turn the unit. What I'm saying is, if you if, in, if you swap the parking areas. The, the guest parking, as you refer to them, uh, for maybe one of these N units, uh, you just created some additional open space and it creates less density in, 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 the, uh, in the development. That's it's, it's worth considering. I mean, I mean can, this is what the sketch about. plan is for. Just uh, agreed, give you some agreed. thoughts. I'm, I'm hearing, I'm, I'm just trying to understand. You're saying, like, lose one of them and leave it green or lose that one and leave yeah, it green. Yeah, typically the end. The end cap is what you want to probably consider. Actually, it's a val more valuable unit. If we lose one, it will be the middle one. Well, that's a discussion down the road, but I'm just <laughs> <laughs> throwing it out there. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Um, as with sketch plan, this is all for comments, for them to refine and hone the, the plan into a, a preliminary plan to come back to us, obviously. Um, 
So I mean, if any member wants to like match his comment, please you know state your feelings towards the overall plan, any comments that you have towards it, and uh, and we can move along. As I said earlier, there is no public comment on this um, a sketch plan. So why don't we go through the different members and uh, your overall sentiments for it? I'm gonna start with Susan. Sure. Uh, I have to echo Matt. I'm. <clears throat> it feels really dense. <coughs> I'm. I, and the fact that this is going to sit higher than the bike trail, which the which then sits higher than the art center, it's it's a very different look to walk along, and all of a sudden there's going to be this very these very tall buildings. I, I'll be I'll be curious to see what kind of buffers you're looking to create in the back to soften, you know, the view. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like for these. There's not you don't have that many neighbors. And I, I, you know, respect your thought that the change from the paving from a commercial business is, for some, would be an improvement. <clears throat> but this is going to be a, a very different visual, different uh, visual was, yes. looking out their windows. And, and um, just so you, you, you know, the trees along the property line where the existing houses are mm -hmm. are proposed. They're not existing. Okay. We, we weren't looking at that, but I'll go out and uh, actually walk the trail I have and I'm gonna walk that to see what the you know how deep it is. If it's deep and it actually goes in, we might be able to put some berming in there and some trees on our site, you'll never see those houses. They're gonna be twenty four foot high tops. Twenty four. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah, Ed, Matt's right. I mean it, it's a conversation for another day, but I, I could see removing off of those yeah. two five unit buildings four. It feels a lot it feels a lot less dense. It's, it's fine. And it's still I, a lot of, how many square feet would each of the units be? Did you, Jim, did you count that? Well, yeah. Oh, okay, so 22 by 40 by two stories. Right. I'll do the math, thank how you. Many? 22 by 40 by two stories. I don't know, I'm not, yeah, it's about 1,660. 1,660. Okay. 16 to 18, depending on the unit. The end unit's a little larger. Okay. Yeah, things that you could do to soften the, it's a big, it's a big visual there, change, an improvement from sound and other things, but a big visual change. It's a point well taken. I understand. Thank you, Doug. I concur with the open space concerns. Um, I'm just thinking you might move the whole thing a little bit further away from Maplewood, and then you know you wouldn't necessarily gain, but it would be. You get more open space, or at least the appearance of more open space at the Maplewood End. But it's not a, it's not a bad plan. I, I I like like her. I'd like to see more buffer of some sort. But again, if it's going to be if it's already eight or ten feet below, and only and their setback is what thirty feet from the back. Yes. Yeah, I understand it. And the and then they're twenty feet high. There'll be a, I the think angle. The you'll peak, barely see the tops of them. That's if, what if I mean. You really straight, won't see the tops. See the top. From from the from the trail, but I, I think we need to go out there and look at that. And I'll take my landscape architect with me, and I'll say, you know, hey, the concern is, you know, walk the trail. You're going to look at a house that's 24 foot high. How do we soften that? What do we do? And uh, we make a proposal to try to to do that. I think something has to be done there anyway because it, it just makes it a nicer development. Like Dan, my only other concern is the width of the driveway and the fire trucks. I know they're never going to burn down, but you know. <laughs> fire trucks might have to come up there for some reason at some point. Well, they're running trioxes up there now on a 16 foot wide. All right. That's all. Thank you, Doug. Matt, I know you've already spoken yeah, a little I, bit. I but stated I just want to uh, reinforce that I'm, I'm in favor of this type of development for some of these infill lots in the township, particularly with the access to the trail. And if you can create that amenity for the property owners, I think it's, I think it's a very, uh, it's a it's a very strong um, selling point for for those those homes. So. Thanks, Matt. Ed. Yeah, I think I echo everything else, and I I do think what they have here is, is a major improvement. Because if you do walk the trail in the morning, you're usually looking at the back of their backhoes and dump trucks, and there's a lot of noise, a lot of diesel fumes. As you come in to where lot number one is now, they have huge piles of materials, asphalt and sand they use in their business, and I think. You know, this would be a, a huge visual improvement over what there is today. Thanks, Ed. John? No. Okay. Julia? 
Um, I'm excited about the proposed use. I think it's very appropriate for this site. I think it will work out very well here. I'm concerned about the curve around the corner where the driveway has the little curve. I think you'd want, I'd want to see the, uh, whoever's in charge of fires to check that out. No, the next curve. Like uh, going in from here? right there. Yeah, right. I'm a little concerned about that tight that curve is. That's something I would just want to double check. Um, again, the trail access, but I think that's already been said. My only other comment is um, the 36% impervious coverage in this district is very high. I don't see a reason for going one iota higher because this is a complete change of use. We're not shifting a building. We are not, you know, moving a few more parking spaces in. It's a, you're completely starting over pretty much from a blank slate except from your, your road access points on this site. It's too tight. You need more coverage of vegetation and trees. You need more parking spaces. It doesn't solve the problem to get rid of the three parking spaces. You need guest parking somewhere. You have to have it. And it's just too tight. I think start with 36 as a maximum completely. I wouldn't consider going a tiny bit over that. Um, I think it's great that overall the impervious coverage will be lowered when this is built. It'll be a beautiful development, I think. Um, that's it. Steve? Thank you, Julia. Dan, I'm assuming that meets this meets the parking requirements? Yes, it exceeds it. Okay. And each unit, the end units are going to have two car garage? That's correct. And then therefore uh, two cars in front of the garage. That's correct. So it's four. And That's correct. As, and a single unit will have one car garage and one in front. That's correct. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like there's enough parking to me. Um, I mean, it just seems if you have one, if you have two, you know, two drivers living in a unit, that's the garage in the end. If they have one visitor, then they're, and how many additional spots do you have minus the three you're losing? Well, then there would only be four, so we need to investigate trying to get them somewhere else. Yeah, I just don't see how you're going to have enough parking. There's clearly, there's no way you're going to park on a 22-foot right away or street, well, yeah. which is going to push you down onto Maple Avenue. And I don't think the parking's good there or on Highland either. So I, I just, I don't see a, a good alternative. I mean, the people are going to have to park somewhere, and there's really not another another spot for them to park. So I'm less concerned I'd like to see it maybe increase the parking and, and not necessarily I, I and maybe leave the impervious the way it is and maybe if you have to back off a unit or two to create more parking I'd rather make that sacrifice and as opposed to driving people walking along this you know Maplewood or High, Highland Avenue trying to find a spot getting hit or whatever the case may be is thank you Steve skip yeah, my, I have to agree with uh, earlier comments about I think it's one or two units too many. Uh, I think removing one or two units solves a lot of the problems about parking, possibly solves impervious issues. The only other thought that occurred to me is that uh, I wondered if the uh, landowners had talked to either of the two landlocked lots. If you could add those to this development, that would, no. That would be a material improvement. It was, it was tried, contemplated, and... <laughs> is not going to happen and dashed the other reason to keep that guest parking up is that I, I think um, you might eventually have problems with your neighbor the art center if people are poaching spaces over there and going to parties on or whatever okay thank you skip um, I too have been in favor I think it, it is a it is a good proposed development a good use back there uh, I think it would enhance the trail um, I, I agree. I, I like the development. I think it is a little dense. Um, I also, um, uh, I know Dan, uh, you say, stated that uh, it, you know if it if it reduces the impervious, but uh, I I believe Julia, I do do practice some zoning law in my feeble capacity as an attorney, and um, I think that if you're changing the use all the way out, you're gonna you're gonna have to comply with 36 percent. And before you go much further, I'd get a either a confirmation from our zoning solicitor to that extent or go before the zoning board to get a, um, a clarification of their position before you spend a lot of money on this because I think that with going to a totally different use, I think, I'm think i not sure you're going to be able to get that deemed um, uh, grandfathered impervious. Um, other than that, I do like it. I, I like the plan you know, overall. I think you know you, you probably need to use one or lose one or two units given the impervious. You've got to get it down to 36 if that's where they deem it, but overall I like it. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for your input. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, we've had a vacancy on the Environmental Advisory Council. However, um, our committee member, uh, Skip Kunda, has volunteered uh, to sit on that Environmental Advisory Council. So um, we're going to get a motion to appoint Skip to the Advisory uh, Environmental Advisory Council. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. No opposed? No, Skip, you're not allowed to oppose yourself. <laughs> um, Good for you. Old business. I don't believe there's any old business pending. Uh, new business. Um, the commissioners have uh, uh, formed an ordinance review subcommittee. Um, they have asked three appointees be from the implementation committee. They've asked for three appointees from this planning commission, and I believe they've sought two or three other appointees from the general public, which they're seeking um, resumes, and you're supposed to send your resume to the, um, uh, the township manager, if I'm not mistaken, Dan? Right. Okay. Um, I have uh, polled our uh, planning commission members, and um, John Ellinger, Sue Stern, and Doug McCone uh, would like to be a part of that uh, ordinance review subcommittee, so I'd like to make a motion to appoint uh, those three to the Ordinance Review Subcommittee. Do I have a second? I'll second, second that. All Thanks. in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Go to work, gentlemen and lady. <laughs> um, public participation. Any comments uh, generally from the public? Please approach, state your name, address, and your general comments. Hi. I'm Jim Schneller. I live at St. David's Condominiums on Lancaster Pike. And I have commented here from time to time. I really just wanted to ask you about that very topic. Are there any, are there currently any ordinances under review by the commission? And is that your function generally? I'm really just asking because there was a subcommittee meeting of the, um, I think they are the, uh, the zoning and planning subcommittee and they, they have new and lively ideas, either from the public or from other members of the, the administration, about changes to ordinances. And I'm wondering about your function, because does, you, does the commission have a function uh, to review any amendments to the code? And if they do, is it limited to land use? Um, to answer your question, the commission, the planning commission has the, uh, basically is charged with um, advising the Board of Commissioners upon all plans related to development in the township, just like you just heard us in the past three developments here. Um, we're promoting the public interest in un an understanding of the comprehensive plan and community development and planning um, of the township itself, and to review, all, to review and make recommendations to the Board concerning the comprehensive plan, the official map, zoning, subdivision, and land development plans, building standards, regulations of the township, environmental matters, and all other plans for the community development prepared by the community development department, i.e., we as a commission, all changes, amendments, proposed new ordinances have to come through this planning commission. Um, the way it is being done at this particular time is, from my understanding, the Board of Commissioners has now appointed this new board, uh, the Zoning um, Review Subcommittee. Um, they will take, uh, they'll be holding public meetings from what I understand. They will be taking, um, uh, making proposed changes to different aspects of the zoning ordinance, and they are limited right now to zoning, I believe. And then any changes or proposals that they will make will come back to this commission for final review, and then we send it up to the Board of Commissioners for their final stamp of approval. So that would be the time for the public to... Uh, the real time, for, the true timing for the public would be at the Planning Commission process. To oh, any, just uh, like with the Garrett Hill um, uh, overlay district that we went through and we made lots of changes to that. Right. Um, yes, there was a lot of pre-meetings to that, but um, really the, the true public comment comes at the Planning Commission stage. Great. And how about if a member of the public seeks to... I'm just throwing ideas around, but if the public, if a member of the public seeks to have a, an amendment, of course there's some kind of 
a process um, for people who were you know involved for landowners. But if a person comes out with an abstract idea, um, I guess with the new subcommittees, that would be the place to start. I, I would believe that that would probably be the place to start, would be to, if you've got some ideas for some uh, better ways to enhance our township zoning ordinance or all, any of our ordinances, would be to approach the various uh, subcommittees or your commissioner. And how about for uh, recommended shade tree changes? Uh, would that come before you? Shade tree changes as in? To, to, their, to those, anything related. I mean, I well, assume. shade tree is really related to sub, land development subdivision because they're under this land development subdivision right. ordinance, so they fall under our purview also. But then how about the actual shade tree ordinance? That's under, well, shade tree ordinance is under subdivision land development, right, Dan? No. Well, the, the shade tree ordinance is a standalone ordinance. Okay, sorry, apologies. I mean, but if you have some suggestion for changes, uh, you can reach out to staff or to the chair of, of that, that committee. Because I know is an, There isn't a woodland, right. there's a group that are meeting to discuss woodlands and updating, right. and that's interacting with shade tree at the same time. So if you have some suggestion, you can give it to me. I could pass it on to the chair, which is Howard Holden, or you can contact Howard directly. And likewise, uh, design review board. I mean, there's a lot of interaction in the, in the code, maybe less than shade trees, but uh, if there were proposal, proposals made, and this one I can tell you, I'm just thinking about uh, the role of the planning commission and or the uh, design review board for outdoor dining, say, in, a, in anything other than, a single, than a, a, a single business. In other words, anything resembling a mall. Could the, I'm just wondering in the future if there could be an approval process, at least stated, for instance, in Chapter 255. So with that in mind, since it involves design review board approval, would that kind of thing come before you as a, if it was sought to be amended? Well, I mean, if there was a new building being constructed that would have outdoor dining, the Planning Commission would see it first, and then typically one of the comments is, because it's a commercial building, that, they, that the applicant must get approval from the Design Review Board. But that could be signage, it could be awnings, uh, I mean, there, there's, there's oh, landscaping. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't want that to happen, but they do look at, right now they look at sidewalk dining in the... Uh, overlay well great I just wanted to kind of get an idea where I stand thank you thank you mr. Schneller any other public comment okay do we have a motion to adjourn I move. So moved. all in favor aye, aye. aye.